there's too much misinformation around the internet. Yeah, there are too many too many people are posting out fake um, fake news every day about fo our football clubs. Yeah, yeah. It's fake narratives and like you know using fake stats and this and that. You know, like people keep waffling about um we can't compete with Real Madrid and this and that, mate. They've spent 134 million euros more than Arsenal in 12 years. Mm -hmm. How can't we compete with them? Look at what they've won. Yeah, Man City. We, we've we outspent um, Man City since Arteta's been here. There's only three clubs that have spent more money than Arsenal since Arteta's been Arsenal manager. PSG, Man United, Chelsea. Yeah, but, boy, they don't, but bro, they don't want to talk about that, though. Nope. No, nope, they just want to keep waffling and waffling and waffling, bro. I'm sick and tired of it. At the end of the day, this football club, I'm now being told um, we're, we're, on the, um, we're on the FFP watch list and... Uh, mm. Profit and sustainability is going to stop us from uh, the Premier League. Profit and sustainability is going to stop us from spending. Last time I checked, Arsenal get about half a billion quid a year income. Yeah, so so are we breaking what's the anything? issue? Yeah, exactly. Like, are we skin? I don't think we're skin, are we? And if we are skin, then that goes back to the manager, technical director, and the hierarchy. Yeah, because they've mismanaged our funds. Yeah, because you want to know where your money's gone. Exactly. And bro, and, and it, it, it's a load of rubbish anyway, right? But if it isn't rubbish, then that's all the more reason to be calling out why we wasted 65 million on that geezer from Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I'm putting him on 280 grand a week. He's our highest, mate. It's a disgrace. It's an absolutely, I'm sick and tired of it, Rans. Yeah. Luckily, Arsenal don't play this weekend. Yeah. But honestly, mate, some of the trash I see on the internet, yeah, about Mikel Arteta, like, do me a favor. You know, I was I was watching an ex Arsenal player on a podcast last night. Big up Kevin Campbell. I like Kevin Campbell. But some yeah, of the he's, stuff he's he was saying, guy, bro. Man. Yeah, he is. I've met him a lot of times, man. He's really nice. That's why I don't go in on him because <laughs> like mm. calls. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, some of the stuff him and the other fellow were coming out with is just laughable, right? We've got a good squad. They're good players. They all deserve to be here. You know, we're competing with Man City and Pep. Oh, how did Wenger compete with Fergie? Like, we can't judge this manager until he's on a level playing field with Pep financially. Like, Pep's yeah, but, out. Yeah, but like, you, your manager, uh, Wenger, never never spent anywhere near what Ferguson spent. Facts. And he didn't Mate, need this... to because he used his um his coaching skills and his talent ID. That's what he used. Exactly. And, and as much as he got a lot of players wrong, and he did get a lot of players wrong, you know, I'll tell you one thing, he could coach a player to be better. You know, like, look at some of the names we've had over the years that we're like, who's who's Freddie Lundberg? Mm. Right, who's this guy? Who's that guy? Yeah, like even a, even a fifty odd year old Edu Gaspar, our technical director, or sporting director. Yeah. yeah, if he if he put his boots on, he'd be our best midfielder. Yeah, he'd genuinely <laughs> so be not our even best. Even a bad shout, you know. Like, he was a he was a bloody good player. Like he'd genuinely be our best midfielder even now. Yeah, and mm. like when I'm when I'm hearing all this, so oh, yeah, we can't compete with Pep and this and that rubbish. Find a manager who can, mate. Yeah, because we've got a good team. Yeah, we ain't got a great bench. Our bench stinks, but we've got a good eleven. Yeah. yeah and if you and, and if you um, I'd even say this. Yeah, if you actually went and got Arsene Wenger to come back right now, we'd have more of a chance of winning the title than we do now. Of course, hundred percent, hundred percent. You'd because be able got, to identify the problems. Yeah, we've already got a, a centre back pairing that's decent. Yes, they both have stupid moments. But they're both competent defenders. Saliba's the better one out of the two, but they're very good defenders. Yeah, we've got a left back who's a who's on loan in Sochi that we can bring back. Yeah, and we've got a right back. Yeah, that showed last season he can actually be a good player. Yep. Yeah. So what's happened this season? Yeah, we've got well, a midfielder. Got a left back on loan. We need to bring home as well, bro. In, in your well, fucking he's country, right now. He's I know. It's... This is crazy, bro. Hey, bro. Then man need to get this manager out of here before he ruins our club. You know. I'm glad that um, they took the the clause, to, um, the buying clause out of Jaden's contract because he's coming back. But we can't let go of um, of Fernandez. That doesn't make sense. We shouldn't let best. go of Kova, the goalkeeper either. There's a few things that he's got wrong, and now Hannibal's leaving, which I'm not against because he's not he's not that good anyway. Um, I think Pelistri should have been given more of a chance. I rate him more than I rate flipping android 17 bro like everyone's talking about him playing on the right hand side he's not better than palistri bro and palistri is is an international as well he actually plays so i don't know how palistri can play for his country but he can't even get 20 minutes for man united like it's, yeah, it it's, make worry, any it's sense. worrying me bro like the whole thing's crazy have you heard what he said about martial 
Who's that? Your manager. You heard what he said? No. Yeah, some, somebody put the exact quote, and I don't want to paraphrase it, but somebody put the exact quote, in, but it was saying, <laughs> it was saying along the lines of, um, yeah, it's, it's his problem that he's not fit or something. Yeah, Tony's saying, not ill. Tony's not ill, guys. No, I don't think he is. He's not. He's fallen out with this manager as well, bro, because remember, you lot saw he was shouting at the manager. Um, he was shouting at the manager on the pitch when the manager was shouting at him, telling him to press, and it wasn't his fault. It's because Rashford didn't cover him. And then since then, we ain't seen him. So, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just, it's one of them ones where um, he's a disgrace. He goes, Martial, he's not fit. We want players to be fit in this moment. He's not. We have to make him fit. It's his job as well. That's bullshit. I thought he was ill. That's what I'm saying. I thought he was ill. And now he's not fit? Mm. Maybe, maybe maybe that cold's made him pull a, I don't know, a muscle in his back when he sneezed or something. It's lies, bro. It's <laughs> lies. It's lies. That's what it is, bro. It's lies. The same way he said that Varane was ill. Varane weren't ill. Varane just didn't turn up to training because he was pissed off. Do you know what mm. I'm saying? Like, like, bro, we know what's going on. He done the same thing with Casemiro. How many times is he going to do this to us before we actually realise what's going on here? These yeah, men don't want to play for him no more. Like, bro, did you see Sancho's um, um, Sancho's Instagram? These men were... These men were leaving him messages like he just he got out of a relationship with Amber Heard for fuck's sake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro. Man just bust case. <laughs> man look like he just bust case, you know. Bro, I swear down. And this is elite players. I'm saying Jude Bellingham. Yeah, Jude was Vinicius, on the yeah, see, All Vinny, these yeah. men there saying, oh, like heart emojis and that. But like, bro, you finally got away from that guy's Satan, bro. Mm. He's yeah, man. Satan. Bro. Uh, but that shows you know all these players talk to each other, man. Like you, you know, you know that Sancho and Bellingham are going to be pals. You know, Bellingham and Vinny are pals. Yeah, they all talk to each other. It wouldn't surprise me if they were playing. And then they all go people. fashion week together and all that, bro. These men all hang out. And then if you look, Benny McCarthy commented as well. Mm. And he's our finishing if coach. They, if they, if they're all um if they're all playing Call of Duty or FIFA together at night. Just relaxing. Oh, like, 100%. Just... They're all friends, bro. And the thing is, yeah, mm. when Ten Hag gets sacked, Benny will still be there because he was a club appointment anyway. So he don't give a shit. Yep. Yeah, facts. If he was Wait, such a it... bad trainer, why is one of our, why is our finishing coach leaving him a message? Yeah, because he ain't going to do that for PR. Let's just be real. That ain't just a PR move. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it, it makes no sense, bro. It makes no sense how anyone can still back this. Like, at the end of the day, you've had... Since he's been there, what he's been there, what eighteen months, just over eighteen months. Mm -hmm. In that eighteen month period, you you have had enough red flags waved for that fan base to sit there and wake up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've had you've had the Ronaldo one where he's done the interview. That was probably the biggest one as well because he's the biggest name. Yeah, but the yeah. problem with the timing of Ronaldo's thing is what done him. Mm. If Ronaldo done that interview at the end of the season where he scored eighteen goals, it would have looked better. Do you know what I'm saying? But he done the interview when he wasn't getting played and he was he was playing terribly. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's one of them ones where it was the wrong timing. It was the wrong timing. And also, he didn't mention names or nothing. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, he could have went in more. Now I look at it, I thought he was bad at the time, but Ronaldo could have gone in even more and he didn't. He didn't because He's Bear Man waiting. clearly agree with him. Oh, of course they do. Come on, man. Like, listen, Casemiro, yeah, Casemiro, Varane, they've played with him, bro. Yeah. yeah they've, they've played with him at Real Madrid. Yeah, like, come on. Like, they, they, they know him inside out. They're all pals. Yeah, so yeah. you've got that little Real Madrid click there. Yeah, then you've got the English little core at Man United as well. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Then you've got uh, Bruno, yeah, and, and Delo, both Portuguese. Like, yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Remember when he first came and there was the leaks, yeah? That man were getting upset because he took their dessert away, bruv. <laughs> See what I mean? The man took Luke Shaw's um, took Luke Shaw's yogurt and, do you know what I'm saying? His cake and custard away, he got upset. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's tiramisu, it man. He won't allow that extra slice, man. Do you know what I'm bro, saying? No ketchup on your chips today, These Luke. are the players you need to get out of the club first. I'm telling you. The players that are ruining the culture of the club are mm. the British players, I promise you. Oh, 100%, bro. They're probably the most egotistical, yeah? Right, and they're probably the most arrogant, condescending pricks out of the lot of them in that dressing room. The worst, the worst. Players like Rashford, McTominay, sure, mm. get them yep. out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, them three definitely. I Maguire. Wouldn't, Maguire. Oh, 
Wamba Saka don't come across like that. Wamba Saka's a cool you. Even Rashford's yeah. a cool you, yeah, if he's around everyone else, isn't it? But the thing is with Rashford, it's like I feel like he's at a point now where he's kind of fallen out of love with the football club and he just looks like oh, he don't bro, he, shit no more. He just you know, like genuinely that? don't care, mate. Like, yeah, honestly, that's, that's what he looks like. Wigan, I don't blame him. Crazy. I don't blame him because he's a Man United fan. He's grown up at the club and he's probably seen all the politics, all the bullshit and he's at the point where he's not enjoying his football no more and he genuinely doesn't give a damn. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? And that's what it is and that would change if, if the... If yeah, but the, yeah, but at the same time, at the same time, he's a professional footballer. Yeah, so you have the, the clues in the name, professional. You have to act professional and you still have yeah. to do your job. And I know it's difficult. Listen, <clears throat> you've probably logged on and done streams when you've had a row with someone or something's going on in the background in your personal life and you're thinking, I really don't want to stream mm -hmm. today. Like, and you've come on, you've just been mad snappy with people in the comments or whatever. We've all been there, bro. Yeah, and it, it must be difficult to be a footballer seeing all the crap going on whilst yeah. you're playing at the club you support. Yeah, however... On the flip side of that, he is a professional getting paid millions of pounds to play and represent for that football club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah, you turn up every day. I turn up every day. Yeah, we still perform every day. Yeah, it's a completely different scenario, but it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same premise, same basis. Yeah, you have to perform, bro. I did three watch-alongs on the spin the other day off a three-hour sleep. Yeah, yeah, and I was still lively and bubbly and loving life all the way through. And why? Yeah, it's my job. I have to do it. When I came off of them three watch alongs, I was like, well, I'm done. <laughs> but it was like the chat would get me through. The crowd should be getting him through. The fact he's playing for Man United should be enough for him to turn up every week. Yeah, and yeah. yes, you're not going to put 10 out of 10 performances in. Of course you ain't. Yeah, but I have to do the bare minimum and the basics, man. He don't look like he's doing any of that right now. He nah, looks he like he wants to be anywhere you know other than the pitch. It's like, it's one of them ones. I'll be real. Like, some people though they need not even some people because i'm one of those people if i'm not happy with my surroundings i can't function bro i'll fuck the place up <laughs> like, <laughs> that's who i am that that's who i am like, stop putting people in headlocks again yeah <laughs> bro, I'm, bro i'm bro i'm the kind of guy if i'm not happy i have to leave because if you don't let me leave it's problems for everyone like i know that's what i'm like i can't sit in the middle of something shit and just pretend it's not happening you know oh, no, I, man, I have to say something yeah, yeah I have to certain say man can mind their own business and just say you know what i'm just gonna focus on myself i'm like bro fuck this i'm not doing it yeah see that's, that's the one basaka that's the one basaka yeah. he looks like he's just chilling yeah, he's bro. just doing his job bro, he ain't getting picking up their money the model professional mm. i'm not that guy bro i'll be honest i'm not that guy bro because every time the manager says something to me i'm gonna have something for him yeah i'm the same bro every yeah. single time bro why, like, why are we bro. doing this in training i don't want to do that in training <laughs> like, i throw i'd make his life hell no, but this is yeah. it <laughs> like bro when man's got us doing these dumb things i'll just be like bro this is why we're losing every week by the way mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what is this? Like, some of the United training, bro. Like, when I saw that Rondo and the ball flying all over the place, I'd have been like, bro, this is why we're losing. Yeah, this is why, this we, why, we're this is why we can see them three goals a game. Every game. Like, mm. what are we doing here? Like, I can't sit here because the problem is, it's like, within the dressing room, everyone's always looking to someone, isn't it? Like there's always a natural hierarchy. There's always going to be a leader that speaks up and people are always looking to look into someone to say something. And you got to have a bit about you to say, you know what, this is shit. And a lot of these footballers don't have the character to do that. Bruno's the manager because he's teacher's pet. That's why. Mm. He's not outspoken. He's not one of them guys that can galvanize the team. When we're losing, what does he do? Mine's he dives and he runs to the ref and complains, bro. He doesn't try and lift his teammates. He's not mm. a leader, bro. Do you know now, what I'm now, saying? Now, a contrast to John Terry, Frank Lampard, Drogba's mm. players like that. Yeah, I remember watching John, John Terry on Monday Night Football once. And yeah. he said, like, you know, we, we'd kick off in training. No matter who the manager is, yeah, if we didn't like the training drills, we ain't doing them. Well, yeah, yeah we're telling we ain't doing them. Yeah, no, we ain't doing this. We, we've won trophies here, mate. What the hell is this? Yeah, but yeah, bro, like, do you know what I'm saying? That's why yeah. they won stuff. Because what people don't realise is, yeah, when people are like, oh, yeah, no one's bigger than the manager. Bro, listen, all the players are bigger than the manager because the players win games, you know, like that. And as they're all getting paid more Ferguson than them. was as a manager, yeah. Bro, we had the best players in the league for most of the time, yeah. That's why we won, innit? 
there, mm. there, there was few occasions where you could argue that, you know what, we weren't the best team and we still won, but very rarely. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? The reason why Salek Ferguson's teams were as successful as they were is because he had leaders everywhere. At one point, Man United had captains all over our team. Ryan Giggs was a Wales captain. Keno was Irish captain. Beckham was England captain. Do you know what I mean? Valencia was fucking captain for his country. And then Gary Neville became captain for us. Rooney was a captain. Like, I mean, Rio captain, Vidic captain. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, we had, le we had leaders all over the team, bro. Yeah, you know man. I mean? And that's why we were winning stuff. Like, that's why... As good as the manager was, we had leaders. Lauren Blanc, another not lover captain, bro. Like you and look and at even if, United's team. And even if captains. they weren't, and even if they weren't a captain for their national team, you know, like Gary Neville, for example, yeah. Gary Neville was a decent right back, very decent yeah. right back. He was a steady Eddie, seven out of ten every week. Yeah, but I'll tell you something. It still have a go at people. It still be vocal. It still have a go at Roy Keane. They'd have a, like an argument on the pitch, and he'd be calling out somebody next to him in defence, Rio or whoever it may be. Like, they're always vocal. You yeah, have the problem with this era now, nobody's vocal because it's too toxic. Yeah, it's oh. always toxic. Oh, no, Man we United don't training like... sessions, yeah. Salat Ferguson standing on the side in his jacket like this. <laughs> and United players are kicking lumps out of each other. Hmm? That's that's what's going on. What Man that's think if, he was... That's if, he, that's if he even bothered to go out on the training ground. Bro, sometimes <laughs> he stay in his office. Man think he was out there doing all of the Arteta stuff. He wasn't out there doing that. Nope. Queros or Steve McLaren. He didn't need um, to do that because these men were managing themselves. Real characters. In this Man United team, we ain't got no real characters. And the ones we do have, the managers neutered them and, is, and, and wants to treat them like everyone else. You don't yeah, treat see, that's, that's, that's Casemiro and Varane yeah. like everyone else. You don't treat Ronaldo like everyone else. You don't. Whether you like it or not, you do not treat these guys like everyone else. It's the quickest way to piss a man off, bro. Like, what people need to understand is, yeah, when all of these football fans talk their rubbish, yeah, it's because you've never been respected for anything in your life because you're a loser. Like, they need to understand, yeah, that people, there are people outside in gangs running up and shooting people. Why? Because of respect, bro. Do you know how important respect is? to a man if you don't give a man respect bro a man will kill a man for respect you know so you can't be someone like Ronaldo or Varane or Casemiro and achieved everything you've achieved in the game and you're going to treat me like Scott McTominay do you want to meet me <laughs> do you want to meet me outside do you want to meet me outside I mean, that's, what I, part, <laughs> bro, that's what I'm on bro like man kill a man for respect you know yeah, that's true it like, is in true. real life like no joke thing man bro man lose their life or over disrespect every day of the week and mm. ronaldo and these men are gonna go and win five champions leagues Varane's gonna lift the world cup and then you're gonna treat man like an idiot bro look what happened when rio said when david Moyes was talking about oh watch jaggy Elka videos is man mad bro do you want to fight <laughs> <laughs> he mad me. I'm Rio Ferdinand. He should be watching me. <laughs> bro, bruv, Vidic lost his head. Vidic mm. lost his head, bro. Had to leave the club. Because man's talking about Jaggy Elka, Tanamania Vidic. Come on, bro. This is exactly what I'm trying to say. When you disrespect man that have actually put their life into something and achieved something, bro, it's the quickest way to catch a fade, bruv. And that's why Ronaldo left like that. I would have rather Ronaldo grabbed him up than left with the interview. I'd rather they got into a punch up or something. I would have appreciated that. Mm. I would have. Because Ronaldo should have put hands on him, I'll be honest. That's what should have really happened. I'm surprised Casemiro ain't put hands on him, but that's why he stayed in Brazil. But it's like you don't disrespect guys like that. Even though Ronaldo wasn't playing well, yeah, there's no way. <laughs> 